Hi, I'm Chris Ignacio, and on behalf of the Asian Cultural Council, I'd like to welcome you to the second night of East West Fest. East West Fest is a celebration of community coming together through art, giving ourselves permission to experience and express joy, and unapologetically taking charge of our own stories. For four nights, we celebrate storytelling through words, beyond words, and through food, culminating in a discussion between ACC alumni, Pulitzer Prize winning author Viet Thanh Nguyen, and multimedia artist Tiffany Chung. Tonight, we feature performer, dancer, choreographer, educator, Mai Lei Ho, and her project Layer Rhythm, a monthly event that brings together live musicians and street dancers. I personally got to experience Layer Rhythm myself, and it was one of the best nights I've ever had in New York going out. If you want summer with real dancers and real music, this is where it's at. We really hope you enjoy. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. And once again, welcome to East West Fest. Hi, Marle. How are you? Hello. I'm good in yourself. Very good. Thank you so much for agreeing to be a part of this. I just wanted to ask um, if we could give a little bit of context to people who might not know about layer rhythm. What is layer rhythm? What are we about to see tonight? Yes, thank you. So Layer Rhythm is a um, night. It's a party slash performance slash concert slash game based night. It's all in one where musicians meet um, with street and club dancers meet with audience ideas. So let's say you come in as an audience and um, we're going to ask for random ideas. What do you want to talk about today? Maybe something about what's going on in society today, or maybe you just want to be at the beach and that's what yeah. comes out of you today, the sand and beach. And, um, and then the invited performers on a given night um, have to create something based on those ideas from the crowd. Mm. So there's usually one or maybe two dancers invited on a given session. And, and they'll take that and then with the live musicians, drummer, bass, keyboard, sometimes an MC and a singer, um, they'll together create an atmosphere, a soundtrack, and it's 
movement based story based on that. So it's definitely a collaboration and a co creation effort. Um, it's all improvised, all freestyle. The idea is to highlight freestyle voices and freestyle artists. Um, and um, yeah, it's like, let's create together, let's build community together. How did you uh, come up with it? Were you just one day like, mm, I think I, I have this idea and I want to make this happen and you just did? <laughs> I wish <laughs> I wish it worked that fast <laughs> one day. Um, it's a combination of a few things. I would say the idea of doing something mixing or bringing together street dancers and musicians was brewing since 2010, 2009, 2010 with a friend actually from France. And she she did something like that, a sort of jam session like that called uh, Salade Composé in France. Her name is Isabelle Clarenson. Um, and then I wanted to create also something similar here. I moved back here, New York. So um, I was like, you know, what can I create? But it was kind of blurry. I wasn't sure. I was also unsure of will people respond to this? You mm. know, how are gonna musician respond to this? I had no idea if people were down for that. And, um, and then in 2015, 14, I was lucky to be on the tour with uh, Theo Parrish, um, Detroit music producer, and the live band that he put together. And he invited four freestyle house dancers to be on the tour because to him, it's very important to represent the culture as a whole, not just the music aspect, but how dancers contribute to that as well. It's, it's really an ecosystem in that sense. So I have so much respect for that artist, also for the, you know, of course, for the beautiful music he's creating and groundbreaking that is his own signature. And also for the respect he gives to the dancers and how he's modeling that and how he's modeling, you know, what a real party is. It's like, it's something social. We're supposed to dance together. We're not supposed to look at the DJ the whole no. night on our phone the whole night. So he, he definitely wants to bring that spirit and, you know, the tour was a way to model that in a sense just get into your zone you know just yeah. get together or get into your zone the music is made for that so that experience was definitely changing for me because throughout the tour I realized that um we had an exchange you know with the audience mm -hmm. and there was also an exchange with the music the musicians in the back and there was that one track where everything was freestyle. There was no choreography for that track at all. There was a one track of the whole concert that had nothing prepared and it, we were just freestyling. And that was the track where the most magic built over the night. Mm. Mm. Um, because as we danced, we started to hear the musicians respond to our footwork or our movement. And then you see that in the eyes of the audience also, they're like, they, they hear it, they see it, they see the connection. So now they're responding to that too. And so the energy that circulates, you know, in all ways, and that was very magic, yeah, uh, very special. And that also brought me a lot of clarity as to the direction I would want to go with you know, an event that brings together live music. And yeah, yeah. And it I, brought me confidence as well. You know, the confidence be like, okay, let's let's do it. Let's try yeah. it and see how people respond. And then yeah. did the first edition 2015 at Meridian 23 and people responded right away. And so we kept on from there every month and built over the years. Nice. Um, okay, maybe I'm gonna ask you something also about like how do you envision layer rhythm going forward like is it going to be different are you i know i didn't give you that prompt but like do you think that's something you could answer yeah i think you know as as soon as possible if we can do things live we're going to do things live and actually uh red hook fest i don't know if you know about red hook festival um is happening in june and we're going to do a short segment outdoors on in the street as part of that festival it's just okay. going to be half an hour, so really short, but that'll be something. So, you know, for the summer, we're definitely trying to do in-person activities, even if they're in small comedy and outdoors. 
And also May 15 is going to be the first live stream of Layer Rhythm. So it will be in the, you know, kind of a small room, small comedy, no real, real audience in the room, but the audience will be online and will respond to online ideas and create from there. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Oh, man. Yeah, so I, I hope that. that we can connect with people beyond New York, you know, yeah. in other cities, in other countries. I'll try to do it in the middle of the afternoon at 3 p.m. So maybe people, you know, in Europe can join. Or cool. We'll awesome. All right. So one last question I wanted to ask you before we jump into these videos is how do you feel that Layer Rhythm is, um, you know, you connecting with your heritage, your Vietnamese French roots. How do you feel connected to that um, through layer rhythm? Thank you for that question. <laughs> um, so back in my teenagehood, you know, uh, in France, I was born in France, father Vietnamese, mother is French. Um, and I, uh, I, I was connecting with um, a community organization called uh, Union, Union des Jeunes Vietnamiens de France, which means Union of Young uh, Vietnamese in France. And through that community organization, I learned a lot. I learned, of course, a lot about my cultural heritage, which I felt was missing in my life. Mm. Um, and I learned a lot about certain values, um, solidarity, mutual aid, um, give and take, always give back, always give back to the next, to the next, um, just that highly contributive element. And that was very strongly imprinted in the, the identity of that organization. Um, so to me, it's related also uh, to the, the cultural heritage and the historical um, lineage of, of Vietnam. And I carry those values with me everywhere I go. Mm. Um, I carry the work that I've learned through this organization. With, through them, I organized my first event ever, which at the time I was 18. And it was a party as well, featuring artists from the Vietnamese diaspora. Uh, so that was my first experience and then the, the, the funds um, were used to um, invest into something in Vietnam, whether that's um, a center for uh, victims of Agent Orange or whether that's to build a bridge in a small village that helps people travel. Um, every year that we organized the party, there was an element of social engagement you know, linked to it. And that's something uh, that's important to me. That's something I see as well, you know, here in the street dance club dance community. The more I dive into this culture, the more I understand why, you know, what's behind, um, who are the people and what's the, why is there a need for this culture to show up in this way? It just tells the story of a people. Um, and so, and, and I connect with, with the values that I see in this, in this culture as well, in, in the story. So um, I would say there's, there's that, there's values that I've learned um, and, uh, and skills that I've, community organizing skills that I've learned over the years. And, and in, in that organization, it was really important to um, invest and contribute in, social justice or environmental justice elements, but it was also really important to, to bond and play games. Like I played so much games within that community. I've learned about so many games. For example, I learned about werewolves. It's, a, it's play role games. And that game, I kind of indirectly put it in layer rhythm. The Cupid session comes from that game. So it's, you know, it's just interesting how nice. But um, but yeah, game very game based. That's how way to bond, and that's how way to find balance. And also and also the energy that we put in into something. You know, there's a part that's very heavy, but needed conversations that are needed, and then the part that is just really bonding and and bringing us closer and more like joyful energy. Um, so in layer rhythm, I I, I try to bring. You know, it's definitely more joyful based, but that doesn't mean that 
the work underneath is not taken into account. I'm really mindful of how I show up um, in this community because street dance, club dance, music, it's, it's, it's black culture, you know? Mm-hmm. So also with my heritage, I think I ask some question that I might not ask myself otherwise. And what's a respectful way to show up in another culture? Um, not colonizing, right? Them, right. You know what? 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 I? What do I hear from them? What do you know? Um, what are their complaints? What are their needs? And how do we? You know, how can we bring our skills and expertise and experiences together t- to build together? So, um, these are kind of hidden elements, you know, in which I think my personal history shows up. It's not very tangible and obvious, you know, it's not like we don't talk Vietnamese, we don't right, right, right. cook, you know, it's very um, underlying, you yeah. know, yeah. it's not an obvious way, but to me, it's still, it's still present. And the more I grow, the more I understand that, um, the more I see that link, I think it wasn't as clear to me before. But um, as I ask myself, you know, what's my history and how do I share and how do I contribute with my experience? I think this is coming more to the foreground, foreground. Yeah, um, yeah. Where I go. And also, you know, layerism is about give and take. Um, and I take as well from, the, from this culture and street dance and club dance, music dance, movement stories. Um, the more I dive into this culture, the more I want to connect to my culture and to dig my Vietnamese roots. So it's really, it goes both ways. It's a two-way street. It's an exchange. It's a give and take. That's how I see it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I mean, I've, I've noticed that I'm sort of approaching things in the same way too. I'm like, how do I approach this as a Filipino American? Like, what are my values, you know, when I show up to this space? Um, so I think that is super super important and i love i loved hearing your your response um i can't wait to show everybody this video of of layer rhythm and all the stuff that you've been working on i think it's amazing and again i'm thanking you so much for for being a part of this event about storytelling beyond words so thank you so much my lay and thank you so much uh, such an honor yes all right let's see let's see what we got yes Enjoy!
mental, it's physical, um, it's emotional. You're trying to put all of those things together. So if you're somebody who's very conscious of music, very conscious of your surroundings and your feelings and able to express your feelings uh, through dance, you, this is a chance to be able to bring those things out. So if I'm listening to the vocalist, I can try to listen to the emotions of the, the vocalist and take those emotions and place that within my inside of me as well and translate that through dance. Those are some of the things that I get from it and that I feel from it as well. And it's not just for dancers, it's an experience for people who are not dancers as well. So they get to come and watch um, more than just a quick little entertainment move. They get to watch a story and they get to participate as well too. So they can create the outcome of what's about to happen on stage. So let's get our next go. We can bring in Lonnie to the stage. Lonnie! on my way here so I was like word I'm ready for this let's go and then as it progressed I like and it started off with drums too so like I automatically felt like everything like hitting super hard like with me. a lot of times in the dance world or just um, in general we get put as like a secondary platform and it's nice that kind of there's a voice returning to us to kind of guide things and um, take a turn at that because you know you need balance you can't just you know it's good to follow it's good to lead it's good to um, lead and finding that and because of this we're able to do something that we're not usually doing enough to do So I think it's been opening up a lot of dancers in the scene in New York and really giving them a new perspective on how to take their movement to other levels or other dimensions so that when they come out this party, they go to like a battle showcase or whatever, they come with a new pocket.
like some intellect tacos. Now my stomach got the heat drops. We gon' take it straight up to the three tops. Uh, keep it quiet, don't speak pop. Uh, had some intergalactic tacos. Now my stomach got the heat drops. <laughs> this is crazy. I was on my spaceship, making it a real wavy. I was going go over the Mars, or maybe a blue planet, and maybe this Chasey. And then I, I decided I was going for the Saturn. See what was happening around all of the rings. I huh, met a young lady who could sing. She said, if you want to know what's in Neptune, you would do your thing. So I went over to Neptune to get some beats. Every single one of them was heat, uh, uh. And I had to hit the photo for the school, but he said, it's not a planet no more. I said, it's ironic. I freestyle. I don't plan it no more. Understand, I do my thing. It's all raw, but it's straight from the core. Had to drop the hot flow with the dog Vader. I said, you got them tacos? He said, I got them. Understand it's really hot. I went up to my man, he rocks. Said, live long and prosper. No doctor's stop. But he gave me a little taco. But it was missing all the guac, though. So what happened to my guac, bro? <laughs> that was not Joe. Hey, hey, yo, hey. He about to turn up inside the phone, hey. Uh, uh, we can manage. We ain't got to eat no Popeye's chicken sandwich. Sometimes it could be a little scary because I never know what topic I'm gonna get from the crowd. And so I never know if what I get is something I'm gonna be able to make fun or make it good. And so I'm always a little nervous. But then once you actually get that, once you get that, that thing that's gonna work, it just feels amazing. You know, once you get that thing that connects with everybody and everybody's enjoying it, it feels amazing. And then you can just ride that wave and just have so much fun with that wave for like a good five, 10 minutes. Usually when this performer's on stage, the dancers are like, people are dancing and there's a performer on stage. But it's like you and the dancer are having this relationship where the dancer will do something and then you'll rap about it. And then you'll rap about something and the dancer will do it and then the crowd will will be uh, the crowd will really love how that conversation works because I'm speaking a different language from the dancer but it still translates and it still works like how tonight um, he gave me the taco and I was like yo hold on where's the guac bro and he came back he put the guac he put he didn't talk to me, but he put the guacamole on the taco, and that was a lot of fun. Honestly, Lay Rhythm is just a beautiful experience. It's, um, because it makes you become more selfless. If you're already a selfless person, it makes you become even more selfless. Because again, it's not about you in that moment. It's about everything around you and everything that encompasses. And how can I give this energy to that energy? What can I take back from it, but still give them some to continue to add to the fold? And just lay up and lay around the front rhyme, and that's literally what lay rhythm embodies.